You gotta think that this movie somehow started off as a live-action adaptation of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, right? I can't be the only one who thinks this. If. Not to be confused with It, that's a very different movie, although both movies do deal with the minds of children. So If is no one's most anticipated Ryan Reynolds movie of 2024, but it's directed by John Krasinski, you know who that is, and it stars Kaylee Fleming and Detective Pikachu. Kaylee Fleming plays B. she's 12 years old, she lives in New York City with her grandmother, she's going through a hard time, but she's whisked off into an adventure when Cal, played by Ryan Reynolds, recruits her to help out a bunch of Ifs, those are imaginary friends, I-F, If. Because their original kids have grown up and forgotten them, so they need to be paired up with new kids or else they'll disappear. And now we have our adventure. An adventure that, yes, is one of those really sweet, really cute kids movies that'll work for the whole family. Parents won't hate it. I have a couple of gripes with it, but for the most part, it does succeed in what it is trying to do, which is tug at your heartstrings. All right, Kaylee Fleming, she's really good in this movie. Have I seen her before? She seems kind of familiar. I'll look it up. Hang on. Oh, yeah. She was young Rey in Star Wars The Force Awakens, and she was young Sylvie in Loki Season 1. Ah, good for her for getting her name out there. She actually really does show off her acting chops in this movie. There's a scene where she's got a monologue and it's just one long cut and she's tearing up. It was really impressive. I was like, yeah, go her. And then of course we have Mr. Reynolds, who I still can't thank enough for doing me that solid for my Red Notice review. But it was actually kind of cool to see him not play his usual typecast self in this movie. He's a bit grumpier here, which I'll be honest, doesn't exactly make him the most likable character ever. But of course there is a story-based reason for him to be so grumpy in this movie. Not gonna give it away, but it really works. And actually one other thing about him that I notice, and actually the movie lets you know in a subtle way, which I appreciated, is that his name, Cal, is short for Calvin. That is totally an homage to Calvin and Hobbes, which for those of you who don't know, is a comic strip about a young boy and his imaginary tiger friend. I love that because I used to love reading Calvin and Hobbes when I was in like middle school going into high school. I still have all my books. I just, I love that. The main imaginary friend character that was marketed for this movie was Blue, voiced by Steve Carell, which again, I feel like is another homage to the character Blue from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Love that. Although he looks more like a Eduardo. And I'll be honest, seeing this character in the trailers, I was like, all right, he's probably gonna be annoying. I'm not the biggest Steve Carell fan, loved him in Over the Hedge, but I'm not a huge fan of The Office. In this movie, his character does have some pretty annoying moments, at least in my opinion, but he ended up being all right, actually. He's huge, too. Like, when you see him just towering over everybody, he's massive. They made him look really, like, big, which means beyond the shadow of a doubt that he gives the best hugs. Ever. More prominent imaginary friend in this movie, though, is Blossom, voiced by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. I love this character. Again, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but her emotional arc really hit me, as did most of this movie. In a lot of ways, it reminded me of Inside Out and Toy Story, the first one specifically, because both those movies deal with kids that are going through some big changes. Granted, Toy Story doesn't deal with it directly, but, you know, they're both movies about the minds of kids and their imaginations. And like both those movies, this movie has a lot of moments where you're like, yeah, that's really landing with me. A lot of those emotional moments here, to the point where I teared up like three times in this movie. No tears ever fell, but I was definitely welling up. It was just really cool to see all the cool stuff this movie had to show. I mean, there's a great scene where B's imagination just runs wild, and I was like, this is awesome. That's probably my favorite scene in the movie. It took me back to being a kid, which of course is what this movie is definitely going for, for adults anyway, to make them feel like kids again. This is gonna be one of those kids movies where if a kid sees it now, when they are young, they're gonna grow up, they're gonna look back at this movie, and they're gonna be like, that was one of my favorite movies when I was a kid because of all the really fun scenes mixed with all the emotional moments that landed well. It was a really good balance. And so I really got to commend John Krasinski on his latest directing job because this movie was directed really well. My gripes with this movie are twofold. Firstly, and more prominently, there is this kid in the movie. His name is Benjamin. He's played by Alan Kim. I didn't really see a point to his character at all. He really doesn't contribute anything to the plot. Like to the point where if he were removed from the movie, the plot wouldn't change at all. Plus his acting isn't really that good. I mean, he's no Kaylee Fleming. Sorry. Sorry, kid. I kind of get what the movie was going for with him, but it didn't really land with me. It could have been executed a lot better. That or just taken out of the movie. My second and final gripe is more of a minor one, and it's the ending. It felt like the ending went on for a little while. Like, the climax of the movie happens, and then, all right, we have an epilogue scene, and oh, then we have another epilogue scene, and uh, okay, and, and then another one? However, looking back, it is necessary. I get it. It does tie up all the loose ends. So really, I'm not sure what I would cut from this ending. Actually, you know what it is? It's the mid credit scene, because the mid credit scene is like a few minutes long. It's like that. So it felt like another ending to the movie. And honestly, I felt it was kind of unnecessary. I don't think we needed that mid credit scene. Lastly, of course, gotta touch on the score, because Michael Giacchino scored this movie. And about the third time I noticed the main theme in this score, I was like, yeah, that's the guy who scored Inside Out. It has that same kind of, like, 
Oh, what's the word I'm going for? Childlike wonder-ish tone in the theme. Yeah, I think that's the best way I can put it. It really works. It's a good score. So in the end, If is a great family movie. If you have young kids, take them to see it. You'll all have a fun time. The characters are great. They're acted great. The writing is really good. It's funny. It's heartfelt. It's got a great musical score. I just felt the pacing was a little wonky with that other kid, Benjamin. But your little kids aren't going to be thinking about pacing. They're not going to care about that. So if you're in a family with young kids, then for If, I will say, go see this movie right now. However, my personal rating for if is gonna be go see this movie while it's in theaters you know from a more objective standpoint so if have you seen it yet what are your thoughts on it and what kind of imaginary friend was yours growing up mine i'll be honest mine was a clone of myself I'm not lying, that's real. What's that say about me, huh? But whatever yours was or whatever you thought of the movie, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Peace!